and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about why graphic design is so important in your painting or anybody's artwork. I made a chart of some more popular graphic designs. I have this hanging in my studio to remind me and to keep me focused on composition, the graphic design, and that's the graphic design is the structure that holds the entire painting together. You know, you can paint and know all the techniques and styles, but if you don't have a strong graphic design that holds it together, for instance, I, before I even start a painting, I choose, like here's some small uh, warm-ups of just black and white tissue paper. So I'm practicing my vertical composition design. Here's another one. This was more about off balance. Then I go right into painting. This one's all horizontal. And knowing the graphic design of this, it made my painting a lot easier to do. This one right here is vertical. Also a little bit of a cruciform. So I do mixtures of maybe up to two or three compositions, but still, but still a concept in the graphic design. This one over here is the golden section. Ah, the, the wonderful golden section right there. So again, another standard composition for your painting. Over here was meandering. I was playing with the letter C. I did the whole alphabet. But basically this is called meandering where, where everything's floating and real graphic. So whether you're doing things that are very abstract, like this is an abstract, so one of the compositions, it, there's two of them here. This is meandering, look at all the meandering. And then one way over here that became off balance. You know, it's that asymmetrical kind of like thing. So things like this can be really strong. They can be graphic and, and very free and abstract. And then they can be very solid. This is kind of my play on words for a whole bunch of candy boxes. And so it's, look at all the contrast, but it's right in the middle. So we have all this other excitement stuff going on, but right in the middle, center of interest. So whether you're doing things that are recognizable, like the figures, this is the zigzag composition. Pretty simple, but it's one of my favorite paintings. And then, or you're doing the cruciform. And again, look where the main focal point flower was positioned in the golden section, all based on that composition chart. So let me show you how I play with the composition design. And I'm gonna be doing frames, overlapping frames. Let's get started. <laughs> So I like making little small graphic studies because it was what I studied in art school. They make every art student do these color and design courses at the very beginning because it is one of the most fundamental things in painting or any kind of art that you're doing. So I, I liked it so much because I'm just cutting out shapes of paper and color and gluing it down, very graphic collages, kinds of things. I, I couldn't believe I was in college doing this kind of play. So I continued this on to this day and I still do it because the little pieces that I do end up on the wall as graphic reminders of pleasant experience, of course. And I also use those images in the paintings when I actually do my paintings. So on my table, here's one of my play tables. Let me show you. So I have some black paper, just black paper, it could be anything, it could be patterns. And then I cut up these little frames uh, uh, using this wonderful X-Acto blade. Every artist should have an X-Acto uh, an blade. They're very surgically sharp. Uh, this is a number 11 X-Acto blade. So I take the paper and I cut out different shapes and sizes. This, by the way, is a piece of gator board, half inch gator board, so it's a nice background for me to do my cutting board. So I use this, some scissors sometimes, and I, so I make some gray paper too. So I have a variety of sizes and shapes that I can get to play with uh, when the time happens. So as we go across the table, you see that I have my white watercolor paper, this is my tape. I'm going to be doing two of these today. And so the design is basically overlapping frames. 
I always put this on the back of the paintings so I can remember what I'm doing. So I put this tape down just like that, a roll of brown tape, keep it on the table so it doesn't slide around. I'm gonna do it to this one. I'm gonna do two at a time. For this glass, I'm going to do two at a time, but I normally do about six of these. It's a great warm-up piece. And right on the same table, I have my chart. So whether you're doing abstract work or more recognizable images, you still follow a composition. And this is one of the decisions that I make before I even begin the painting. So I've already shown you, I'm gonna be doing one of the compositions overlapping frames, but I need to find a focal point. Since I'm not using color, I'm just gonna be using black shapes. So that looks like it might be a good focal point. It says so right here, the golden section. So just know that that's what I'm about to do. And this is pure, pure, pure play. I also have here my gel medium and a wide brush. Gel medium, regular gel medium. Okay, and a big bucket of water, a big bucket of water. Now, when I play like this, I don't cut out little shapes and put glue on each one and stick it down like a mosaic. No, I put glue over the entire thing so I have the freedom using both arms the freedom to play and not be so restrictive. I don't sit down when I do this, by the way. It's almost like a dance. So I'm lucky enough to still be able to do this and stand. First thing you do is wet your brush. I'm wetting my brush. And I'm putting glue. Look how much glue I am putting everywhere, everywhere. So that way I don't have to slow down. Now, cadence and doing this is kind of important to me. I do like the, the tempo of the energy of, of play. This is like the kid in the sandbox, and that's exactly what I am right now. So I'm gonna put it on one big shape. So this is all about overlapping frames. Let's see what happens. Wow, it's down, done. I actually put glue on top of that. That presses the shape right into that glue. Let's play some more. Now, look at this, whoa, tiny little thing up in here. Remember, this is strictly graphic design. Oh, I like this, right in the middle. Just see how I can just keep playing and the tempo keeps going. Whoa, overlapping frames. Oh, let's do this one. <laughs> and it, the whole thing is to respond Instantly, don't slow down and say, geez, I wonder if this is the right thing or not. Look at this one. One of the things also in graphic design is you repeat. Do a lot of repeating of shapes. It helps to hold the whole thing together. So a lot of these centerpieces came out and I used them somewhere else. Very strong. Whoa. Very haphazard, but you know, it doesn't have a focal point just yet. It's kind of meandering all over the place, but it is overlapping frames. At least I got that part right. But here comes the focal point, I think. Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to put it right there in the golden section. Why is that the focal point? It's the only part that's round. I'm going to continue on, continue on. Just play a little bit more. See where it goes. Now I told you about repetition of shapes, how it helps to hold the whole thing together. The part that came out of there, there it is. See how your eye goes there. Oh, a little bit of repetition, but still black. No, back and forth. Do you see how much fun it is to play like this? I'm, I'm gonna let that alone. I'm going to go over to the second one right now. I try not to stay in one place too long. Lots of gel, gel medium. This is my focal point. I'm putting in the focal point right there. And I know it's the only round, well, that's cool. It's the only round part in this cacophony of frames.
Hey, why not? Even the solid one, why not? It's cool. Wow. The play is kind of nice. I like this. And you just keep going, keep going, keep going. See the tempo? So I, I'm not so sure if these are finished, but that that energy and the way you work this way and play around and practice your composition chart, all of a sudden you're gonna have hundreds of these up on your wall. And it's so exciting to see them. So just start off with black and white. And it's graphically very strong. Remember, it's the first thing that all art students take in college. It's one of the fundamentals of called color and design, and I loved it, and that's one of the reasons I continue to do it today, because I loved art school, and I love thinking about learning new things here, even here in my studio to, today. Hey, I hope you had a great time, and take some of these things, try them out, and play. You don't have to be, be painting, but at least you're working as an artist, working with graphic design. Thanks for watching, and pass this on to your friends. I'll see you on the next Bob Blast. Hi there, I'm Bob Burridge, and this is all about Date Night with Bob. We just got finished doing one. See the paintings behind me? This is a two hour kind of a Zoom painting workshop is what it is. And we were painting for two hours. You can either do it along with me or you can sit back and have a, an adult beverage and watch at the same time. This is called a fun thing we're gonna be doing. We've done them already, so it's called Date Night with Bob. And don't you want to do that on a, whatever nights we have? Check out the schedule. It's right behind me. And we're going to be painting like crazy. I'll see you on Date Night with Bob.